Good morning and welcome. We are about to enter sacred time. We are about to make this time and this place sacred by our presence and our intentions. Please turn off or silence your phones. And as you do, I invite us also to turn down the volume on our fears, to remove our masks, and to loosen the armor around our hearts. Don't take my word for it. Do it as slowly as you need to. If you take a little risk with these good people, you may find that they have the same human needs as you do. Breathe. Let go of the expectations placed on you by others and those that taught you to place on yourself. Drop the guilt and the shame, not to shirk accountability, but an honest expectation of the possibility of forgiveness. Let go of the thing you said the other day. Let go of the thing you dread next week. Be here in this moment. Breathe here. I invite you to stand as you are able and join with me in the call to worship as found printed in your bulletin. Welcome, friends, to this holy day. Welcome, friends, to this time set apart. Welcome, friends, to this table of remembrance and joy. The table where we are fed, the feast we share with many. Welcome, friends. Let us worship God. God, we come to your house. We bring our fears, our desires, our sins, and our expectations. We humbly lay them at your feet. We pray that you open our hearts to your love, your guidance, and your teachings. We pray that you enlighten us with your desires for us, your expectations for us, and give us the strength to listen without fear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'll join us in the hymn number 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms.
Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. Please turn and greet your neighbors with the peace of Christ. Good morning. Y'all so with you. I like your earrings. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're going to try something a little different today for children's message. Um, as you can tell, my three-year-old is very excited. Um, and I was hoping that we'd have more children today, but that's okay because we can um, have some makeshift children. <laughs> We've already got one <laughs> on the risers for us. Um, so let's see. I've got one, two. Um, where's the other red one? Here, son. This red one here, and mom, if you will help, okay. And I need D for Denise, perfect, and E for Mike, <laughs> and how about A for Parker? Thank you, guys. Oh, I'm sorry, Parker, just hold off. Thank you for being willing. There we go. That's an A. So, see it on the top, you'll see what it says. Okay, so uh, let's see. Joe, yours is the blue. Anything that is blue with the black circle around it is the A. E is green. Uh, red, okay, is Jeremy. When it's red, when mommy points to the red, you're going to ring your bell. Oh, except his bell just broke. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I know, but he's, he's ringing red. I don't want to take it from Jeremy. Oh, I, oh, yeah, we can still make the song, is what you're saying? Yes, we can. Uh, is that okay with you, Mike? Here, Jeremy. Oh, okay. He's saying yellow because that's his color at preschool, so that's why he wants yellow. Okay. <laughs> All right. So when I point to your color, that's when you ring your bell. Okay. And what we are going to do, we need your help as well. So the gathering music for the children's message is Jesus Loves Me. So we're going to sing the verse of Jesus Loves Me. And then our wonderful children's choir is going to play the chorus. Um, so Sylvia, if you could give me um, a, a C major chord, please. Okay, we're going to sing G. Ready? 
Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Okay, here we go. Yes, Jeremy. Jeremy, oh, too, too fast, Sylvia. Hold on, hold on. We're just going to take it just the bell choir. Here we go. Ready, Job? Yes. Jeremy, your turn. Jesus loves me. Yes. Jeremy. Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Now give it a big ring. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, if you could just set the bells right back where they were, and then you guys can head on to Children's Church. Very talented children this morning. Our scripture reading is actually John 14, 11 through 14. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe, because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in his Son. If in my name you ask for me, ask me for anything. I will do it. These are the words of God for the people of God. Most holy Lord, help us to keep those distractions put away so that we can, just for this moment, focus on your word, your message for us today. May we hear what you need us to hear. May we change in the ways you want us to change so that we may be more fully the people you have called us to be. Amen. trunk or treat day. I remember when I first got here, that was about the first thing we did in person was trunk or treat because it was COVID and we didn't do a lot of things in person. And we, um, we did COVID measures on trunk or treat. It was much more complicated than just handing out candy. Um, so I'm grateful we're not in COVID anymore. But I also remember it was freezing. I mean, freezing cold. Gloves and hats required. Well, I'm grateful that I've been here this long, and I'm grateful that gloves and hats will not be required today, and hopefully rain jackets won't either. In this time, we've, we've had a chance to get to know each other, and we've been together through a lot of different things. And this morning, I want us to think about this passage, this passage that can lead us to wonder some things, can lead us to wonder about what we believe, why we will believe it, and what does this, these short verses, these four verses, three verses, um, really present to us? Because at first glance, we're not so sure we believe it, if we're honest, if we're really honest. Because how are we going to do things 
greater than Jesus. I don't know about you, but I've never healed anybody. There are a lot of things that I haven't done that Jesus did. I don't know that I'm able, but Jesus says, if you believe in him, you will do these things. The one who believes in me. Now that's, maybe that's our problem. I wonder if we believe enough. I mean, do you have to be at 100%? Can you be at 80% and still do the works that Jesus did? Because really, 80% above average, or what about 90%? 90% is an A in a grading scale. What about 60%? And I know some of us are thinking, no, you have to believe completely and totally and fully. And maybe you do. I don't know the answer to that one. But what I do know is that we have trouble believing completely. 100% is hard for us because we, we make so, all sorts of excuses. But the truth is, sometimes we struggle with believing To put it another way, we think that God may not understand the complicated nature of things these days. And we're talking about stewardship this morning, so God may not understand the complicated nature of money these days. In Jesus' day, it was a lot more simple. Now, well, when you pledge, do you pledge pre-tax or post-tax? Do you pledge on the income that you receive but that you put in your um, retirement accounts? Or do you wait and pledge on that later? And which one's the right way to do it? Jesus wouldn't necessarily understand these things, we think to ourselves. Money is just too complicated these days. Or at least we like to make it complicated. We live in a place we never have a budget as a country. As a church, we have a budget. But we just wonder, is it, is it too complicated? Relationships seem much more simple back in Jesus' day. You grew up, you got married, and you liked it. Or at least you were supposed to. If you, if you didn't want to be married and you were a woman, that was a big problem. Men had it a little easier if they didn't want to be married. But still, it was an expectation that you got married. And some people aren't interested in getting married. Nowadays, you don't have to. You have a lot more options as to what you do and how you live your life and how you connect with people and if you make that lifetime commitment or if you don't. Personally, I'm a little nervous because my child is currently saying she's not going to get married ever. She's also not planning on having children. I have one child. I have one chance at grandchildren. Not now, but later on. You should get married, Hannah. Just, just in case you're wondering. I, I vote for marriage and children. That's, that's just my little piece for her. Or I'm going to have a lot of grand dogs. That might be what I end up with, but that'll be okay. I'll learn to deal. It's more complicated these days, we say. So, Jesus may not really understand how complicated it is these days. People have a lot more choices with their money, with their relationships, with their time, with all sorts of things. 
So when we're being totally honest with ourselves, we sometimes have doubts. We phrase them differently. We phrase them in that Jesus wouldn't understand. But the truth is, we don't understand giving everything to Jesus and believing in Jesus and trusting in God's grace to do what we're called to do and putting everything in God's hands if we're busy telling ourselves and telling others, well, Jesus just doesn't understand some of these things. That's a form of unbelief. And we struggle from time to time because our belief level goes down. Maybe it goes down to 60%. Maybe it goes down below 50%. And then what? Jesus isn't upset that we struggle with belief. In fact, Jesus expected it. So the question comes for us, what do we do? What do we do? Well, for me, I don't have any choice but to accept the miraculous works of Jesus. I can't explain them. I can't rationalize them. But I don't have any choice. Jesus did miraculous things. And the world was transformed because of Jesus' love for humanity. For all of us. And Jesus loved us so much that he gave us his very life on the cross. He suffered, died, and rose again. And I can't explain that. But I believe that. So, when we believe in God's past miracles, it strengthens God's present actions because if we believe, like I do, that Jesus died on the cross, was dead, risen, and lives again in us, and that the Holy Spirit came and dwelt among us, if we believe that, then it's a lot easier to believe that God can intersect with our lives and make miracles happen. Miracles. Well, okay, maybe we can get to that point. We believe in miracles. We believe Jesus can do all things, that Jesus can interrupt the flow of the natural order of things, and Jesus can do things we never expected. And I imagine I'm not the only one who's heard of God interceding in lives and changing lives. Well, so Jesus changes lives. Okay. But, but it says that Jesus says, I will do whatever you ask in my name. Well, really? Because we want a lot of superficial things. And and maybe it's not selfish things, because Jesus was never selfish, so it's not about what we want, but if we ask for someone else, they'll do it. But I really don't think my husband's getting the Audi he wants. Just saying. He's not getting it. He points them out to me when we're driving. He's like, there's one. Yeah. (laughs) Go get it for me. (laughs) It's a joke. He's not going to get one. I don't even know if he would be comfortable driving a car of that expense. But will Jesus give him one? He finds them used, and he'll say, this one is such and such dollars, and it has such and such miles on it. Okay. He's not getting one. 
I don't care what it cost. But if I asked in Jesus' name, would he get one? Well, that's, I don't think so. There's a challenge. Even if I prayed, we need to align our prayers with what God wants, God's will. We can't just say, mm, Jesus, I would like a certain car to weigh a certain amount. I would like for this joint not to hurt. I would like to be taller. I would like to not have the aches and pains of aging. And maybe you've prayed some of those prayers. Lord, just let my shoulder not hurt today. Or, let it hurt, but not enough that I can't sleep on that shoulder. Because I like to sleep on that side, Lord. So if you could make it so that I could at least sleep on that side tonight, I'd be really grateful. Thank you, Jesus. I've prayed that prayer. It doesn't always work. Many of you know what it is to hurt and to want it to be gone, even for a little while, just a little relief. Well, we need to align our prayers with God's will because our desires, like that pain-free living in that car that we just want so badly, that change in our bodies, minds. We need to make sure that that's aligned with God's will. And we need to understand that it's a challenge sometimes because we want a lot of things. Now, my husband tells me that I am old enough for my wants not to hurt me. Well, I don't know. I want my shoulder to stop hurting, and it doesn't stop hurting. I, I think I still want that. There are lots of things I still want, but he says I'm old enough that my wants won't hurt me. He's never told me exactly what age that happened at, but I'm apparently beyond that age. When we focus on God, when we are loving God, when we are focusing on the miracles that God has done in our lives and around us and in the Bible, we can't help but want to be aligned with God's will for our lives. So we say, Jesus, whatever you want. I don't really need to sleep on that side, to have that pain go away, to lose that weight, or to have that car. I don't really need that. So God, whatever your will is, your will be done. Another part of this is that English translates you, singular and plural, as you. Now, us who grew up in the South, we know that it's you and you all. It makes it much more simple. We know if you're talking about plural. In this passage, Jesus is talking the plural you. So Jesus isn't telling us personally that it's about us. If we believe, then anything we ask in his name, he will do it. That's not what he's saying. He says, if you all believe, then he will do it. A lot of times, our prayers, our wants, our desires are simply things that we share with Jesus and we don't share with the rest of the community. But when a community gets together 
and that community is aligned with God's will and wanting God's will to happen and praying, Lord, your will be done. And if it be your will, grant healing for this person. Lord, if it be your will, help this person through this difficult time. Lord, if it be your will, stop this. Pain, suffering. And if it is God's will, then it happens. Stewardship, which we've been talking about all month, and maybe you're glad that this is the final Sunday. Stewardship is an opportunity to be with God doing God's will. And it's not just about money. Oftentimes we focus on the money because it's budget season. But we're called to know that stewardship goes beyond that. It's to make the world a better place. Through our pledges and our budget and the money we raise as a congregation, we're able to do things for the kingdom of God. These things we wouldn't be able to do if God wasn't a part of our lives and a part of our mission. Now sometimes we think, I can't do miracles. Maybe more often than we like to admit, we think that. But remember, it's plural, so it's you all. So, you all can do a lot of things. We have overcome adversity. Personal adversity, but COVID, while it's still present, it's not what it was, and we're not on lockdown. Thank God. We survived it. Some of us had more... Struggles than others to survive it. Some of us, it barely made a dent in our daily lives, but some of us, it really changed how we do things. People who used to go into the office every day, now they go in sometimes, or maybe not at all. People used to do things a lot differently. It used to be that certain diseases were not even understood, much less named. And so people died of things that we now easily prevent. Because somebody was given the insight, or a group of somebodies was given the insight to work on a cure, to understand a disease so that they could then find a cure for that disease. Something as simple as cleanliness. We didn't know at one time how important that was. And the surgeons didn't wash their hands or their instruments. But we learned. We learned as humanity. And now we have operations in sterile environments. We learned. We learned that there are things that can be done. We learned that there are things that can happen now that couldn't happen in Jesus' time. Even the ability to choose what our life is going to look like, no matter what our mothers think. We can make choices that we couldn't make before. I, for one, am excited about the choices, but that's where the miracle comes, when people are used by God to do the work of God in the world today. And by giving of ourselves, by giving of our stewardship, by making a pledge, we allow this church to plan ahead for what work we will be doing for the kingdom of God. Now, I know some people don't pledge, and and I'm not trying to twist anyone's arm. I'm just trying to explain why I think it's important. 
because it gives us an opportunity to plan ahead. It gives us an opportunity to plan ahead as to how we're going to use the gifts that are being given to this congregation because a lot of times, truthfully, we don't have that many pledges. And we have to estimate what will come in in the year so that we can budget because you can't just decide to have a ministry and not know where the money is going to come from. It, it upsets and makes anxious those of us who are planners. Now, some people, maybe they have more faith, but maybe they just trust God more fully. I don't know, but some people say, well, just go on faith. We're going to do this, and we're going to trust God that we're going to do this. I'm not one of those people. I want to plan. I want to plan to know how we're going to do things. I want to plan to know that we're going to be able to be able to worship together. I want to plan to know that when we need a new HVAC unit, oh, they're expensive, that we will be able to do that. I want to plan to know that when we want to do something in worship, like have palms on Palm Sunday, then we're able to do that because we've had committed Christians make a pledge and we can trust in them. Sure, things happen. They might need to change their pledge. It may be larger. It may be smaller. But we can trust in them. And we can put our faith in them because they're putting their faith in Jesus. Miracles happen every day. Miracles allow us to hope for something more. By giving of yourselves to this congregation, you are giving an opportunity for us to do the work of God's kingdom in the world. We are going to, at the time of the offering, take up our pledge cards but before we do that, I want to thank you for even considering pledging. I want to thank you for the pledges you're about to give. I want to thank you for supporting St. George's United Methodist Church and the ministries we do. I want to thank you for being a faithful follower of Jesus, no matter what level your faith is at. Let's pray. Most holy God, help us, we pray. Help us to understand your will for us. Help us to listen to your still, small voice. Help us to trust in your grace rather than relying on ourselves. Help us to know that if we believe and we align ourselves with you, then you will do greater works through us, through all of us, than you did through Jesus. Help us to trust and know that you alone are God and you alone can transform us and transform the world. Amen.
together. Wonderful God, God of laughter and promises, source of joy and source of hope, hear our prayers. In the calm of this beautiful space, we are mindful of those who do not know the beauty of friendship and community, the calm of daily bread, the peace of life without the violence of war. So we lift up to you those people around the world who suffer this day. The poor, the hungry, those facing rampant disease. 
We lift up to you those places torn apart by war and conflict and by natural disaster. As if we need to lift them up to you, you are already there, compassionate and strong. Help us to follow your example and to help as we can. In the calm of this beautiful space, we are mindful of those in our community who are racked with worry and anxiety about their health, the health of those they love, about work and finances, about their kids' well-being and their education, and their social lives and their education. We lift up to you all who are anxious about so much as if we need to lift them up to you. You are already with them, the still small voice in the midst of the storm, reminding them to breathe and to trust. In the calm of this beautiful space, we give you thanks for this time, for this time set apart to worship. We lift up to you all our praise for the good in life and for the struggles that help us to grow. We lift them up to you, that which we cannot name aloud. We lift up to you our hearts, knowing that you have had them all along. We offer our prayers in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'm going to invite Parker, our chair of stewardship, to come up and share with us just a little bit. morning once again. So we're closing stewardship the campaign uh, and you probably see in your bulletin. So next week we're going to have a luncheon. And I think it's divided. Like A through M is side dishes or something and then the other half is desserts. Uh, I do ask Mrs. Rodriguez if you're listening regardless of where you are bring flan because I want that. Um, so what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to turn in the pledge cards, and next week is going to be the celebration. But I'm actually a little bit, I just want to speak real quickly. I, I kind of want to toss out everything I just said about turning in your pledge cards. And yes, if you're ready, please turn in your pledge cards. I hope that I'm ready and Amy and I, um, and we're going to turn ours in after service since she's back with the nursery. But for those who are newer, newer in the faith journey, or maybe newer to St. George's, uh, maybe you're not ready yet, and that's okay. The church's responsibility is to educate you in how a Christian life is also a giving life. And it takes a while to get there. I'm still not there, and I've been working at this for 30 years. But for those who are members here, and we all know who we are, I'm one, and I'm looking out at the faces of many of us. The responsibility is ours. It's not someone else's. It's not people who are new to the church. It's not people who come into the church from outside groups. It's not the community at large. It's not their responsibility. It is ours. Now, maybe that responsibility, maybe it feels something like a burden. I don't know. Should it? I think responsibility could be a privilege. When Paul was sitting chained in a Roman prison, was that a burden? Or did he say it was a privilege because he could glorify God? And so that responsibility for us is a privilege to glorify God and to do something extraordinary. And if you think that you're not capable of it, if you think that we are not capable of it, were you here Monday night? I was amazed at Monday night at, at our charge conference. There was 80 or 100 or more people 
from Boy Scouts using the church. Maybe some of them don't otherwise attend a church, but they were here. There are AA groups who are here and meet here regularly trying to find peace. There's a preschool that has 35 or 40 children in it all week long. There are hundreds and hundreds of people who have come through St. George's who maybe were not members, but had a huge part of their life as a result of this church. If you're wondering whether or not we've done anything extraordinary, look around. We have. We will. And we will continue to do so. So when you consider your pledge, if you're not ready to write on that something extraordinary in terms of not just your money, but in terms of your commitment to God and the church and the community, then wait. Wait and pray and think. But when you do it, do something that you could not do on your own. Write things on that pledge card that you could not do on your own. And you know that it is coming from the Spirit so that you and we and St. George's can continue to do the extraordinary. So during our offertory, we're going to invite you to come forward. We have a basket on a table, and we're going to invite you to bring your pledge card if you are ready. And our offering is received in the back of the sanctuary in the offering plate and online at stgeorgesfairfax.org. I invite you to be a part of that. I invite you to give as you feel led. Let us receive the offering and the pledges. And I 
I trust in His care. Through purging, what fruit will I bear? Oh, rejoice in the Lord. He makes no mistake. He knoweth the end of each path that I take. For when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as That was wonderful. Thank you so much. You did a great job. Let's pray over our offering. God of all, thank you for the life you give me, for the goods which you supplied to me, the power to make a difference in this world. Be with me in my daily task, my daily joys, my daily sorrows, so that every day, every minute belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us remain standing and sing together. Oh, I'm sorry, it's memory verse time. <laughs> I had to read the bulletin. Well, you'll notice in the bulletin you have your blue piece of paper. We've been working on this verse all month. As we're traveling into our time of change, our leaves are changing, the month is changing, and soon the year will be changing. So much chaos, so much going on. I want to go back to this verse and remember, be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted, oops, sorry. I am exalted in the earth. For those who want to do it one more time. Yes, okay. And know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. Okay, let's. Um, I want to share with you some announcements. Today we have trunk or treat. We also have our stockings available, and um, Commitment Sunday is next Sunday. Please look at what letter of the alphabet you are as to what you're going to bring. And finally, we have All Saints next Sunday. If you would like a saint remembered, please contact the church office. Now let us stand and sing together. Number three... I guess we had decided we weren't going to do that. Okay. Oh, you can go ahead. You're already up here. All right, let's stand and sing together number 3004, step by step.
Now let us go forth to do the work of the kingdom. Let us go forth to offer the light of Christ to the world. Let us go forth to be the light of Christ in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 